This video is sponsored by World War Doe. World War Doe is a brand new mobile RTS game that's different from the other games in the same genre. In this game, you control your movable commander and towers that rage and heal him to take on the enemy base assisted by a whole host of crazy units. There's the bunker to hide my commander in a safe place. Tank arena to soak up damage and destroy towers. Da Chapa and 1-800 airstrike to ensure range and air superiority. The Catling gun for defense and Van gun for his sniping action. And then there's Major Fire with his flamethrowers that do fire damage for crowd control. Still not enough? There are a ton of skins, dances, and taunts for you to show off and let your enemy know exactly how you're feeling. Very soon there will be a global tournament with a $25,000 prize pool. So download now and get good fast to be crowned the best in the world and get a chance to win the prize money. Click the link in the description below to get the game now and join the Simple History Club. Oh, and established or aspiring content creators can apply to join the World War Doe Creator Program. Link also in the description below. Last Ditch Axis Weapons, World War II. In the latter half of World War II, the Axis powers continually found themselves cut off from resources they had earlier in the war. Without the materials needed to keep their massive war machines going, the Japanese and German forces began scrambling to find ways to support their forces while using the least amount of resources possible. This generally meant making crude forms of their current weapons, finding ways to dramatically simplify production, or even making completely new and oftentimes extremely simple firearms. MP3008 Type Submachine Gun Place of Origin Germany In the waning days of the Second World War, the German military was looking at anything and everything they could field. One answer had been sitting in their faces the whole time. The British Sten Submachine Gun Already designed as an emergency weapon by the British, the Sten was lightweight, simplistic, effective, very reliable in close quarters, and above all else, extremely simple to manufacture. For the British, the Sten replaced the highly expensive Thompson submachine guns they had been purchasing from the United States. So, to the Germans, creating their own version of this already existing emergency weapon was an all-too-easy idea. At first, Mauser created the Gerrit Potsdam, an exact copy of the Sten Mark II. Then the company was instructed to simplify the design further, creating the Gerrit Neumünster, officially called the MP3008. From the Sten to the MP3008, only one serious change was made. The magazine of the MP3008 was locked in a vertical position, unlike the lateral magazine that protruded off the left side of the Sten. Aside from this small change, the two submachine guns were almost completely identical. In total, only about 10,000 MP3008s would be produced. The MP3008 would be produced throughout 1944 and 1945, and would oftentimes find themselves in the hands of auxiliary troops, or in the hands of Germany's foreign allies in occupied states such as Czechoslovakia. After World War II, the MP3008 still found service with many of these auxiliary troops until they were eventually washed out by the native designs or other imports. Volkssturmgewehr VG-15 Type Semi-Automatic Rifle Place of Origin Germany Maybe the most famous of Germany's last-ditch weapons is the Volkssturmgewehr. The name is translated as the People's Assault Rifle. This oddly shaped and clearly cobbled together rifle was a mainstay of the German Home Guard, known as the Volkssturm, or People's Storm. This rifle was supposed to give extra firepower to the severely under-trained and under-equipped Volkssturm militia that was used as the final stopgap between the Allies and the complete collapse of the Third Reich. The Volkssturm Gewehr was both an extremely rushed and impractical design. The rifle used the standard magazine of the STG-44 and its 7.92 by 33mm Kurtz round. Unlike the STG-44, the Volkssturm Gewehr was purely a semi-automatic rifle. The production of the Volkssturm Gewehr itself was extremely crude. Almost all of the firearms construction was made from stamped or folded metal, therefore it could be made with even the simplest of manufacturing tools. The only part of the weapon that wasn't made of stamped metal was the bolt itself. The bolt was actually somewhat of an advanced one. It used a simplified blowback action that only uses one moving part, the bolt itself. This, in theory, would reduce the recoil. 
The Volkssturmgewehr was held together with simple bolts and rivets. While this made the firearm somewhat more rugged, this meant that it could not be easily disassembled for maintenance. So, if there were any issues with the gun, it was often thrown away and replaced. Einstoss Flammenwerfer 46 Type Throwaway Flamethrower Place of Origin Germany One of the most feared weapons of all time is the flamethrower. The German army had made good use of the flamethrower all across the world, but these giant devices were expensive and complicated to produce and they required specialized training that would take up valuable time. As the Führer called more and more people to the front, many of whom would receive little to no formal training. In order to combat this issue, a lightweight, portable, tubular, single-shot flamethrower was pressed into service in 1944. This was the Einstoss Flemenwerfer, of which little information is known. In English, literally meaning the single-shot flamethrower, it was just a simple metal container filled with fuel with a nozzle and a trigger at the front. Once the trigger was pulled, the entire contents of the canister would be emptied projecting a single burst of flame for less than a second to an effective range of about 30 yards. After this, it was thrown away. The flamethrower itself was tucked under the user's arm and held in place by a strap that went over the soldier's shoulder. Often, these flamethrowers proved to be more dangerous to the user than the enemy. The Einstoss Flammenwerfer found itself used by German paratroopers until the end of the war and would ultimately end up in large numbers in the hands of the Volkssturm as it was deemed that no training was necessary to use the Einstoss Flammenwerfer, despite it being so cumbersome. Approximately 30,700 were manufactured. Last Ditch Arasaka Type 99 Type Bolt Action Rifle Place of Origin Japan Much like the Germans, the Japanese Empire was on its heels and was running dangerously low on supplies in the late years of the war. Conscripts with little or no training were being equipped with whatever could be found and the standard issue rifles of the Japanese Empire were stripped to their basic components in order to save on production time and material. At the beginning of the war, the Type 99 Arasaka was a well-made and very well-liked firearm that used a smooth Mauser-style action. This rifle would be stripped down to its core by the end of the war. Compared to the original rifle, the late war version looked like a poor copy of its earlier self. The sights on the late war Arasaka consisted of a stationary peephole rear sight without the adjustment for windage or elevation, which the original featured, while at the end of the barrel there was an unprotected blade foresight. These sights worked but lacked the finesse of the original rifle. Just behind the sights, the bolt itself was of a much worse quality than the original. Smooth, low-tolerance metalwork was replaced with crude, unfinished metal with little to no markings. This saved on machining time and allowed for less skilled machinists and metal workers to produce these rifles. Metal pieces that were not absolutely necessary were removed from the gun entirely. This included the butt plate, which was stripped off and then replaced with a wooden butt plate, and the cleaning rod, which was removed completely and not given any kind of substitute. Although the metal construction at the end of the handguard was slimmed down and changed so as to not hold the cleaning rod, its bayonet lug was kept so that soldiers could still affix bayonets and charge enemy positions. Much like its metal components, the wooden body of the Type 99 was cut down wherever possible, the most noticeable change being that the finish on the original was completely removed, thus leaving the bare wood to face the elements with no protection. From there, the wooden handguard that used to run the length of the rifle was cut down to cover only about one half of the barrel. And lastly, the finger groove under the rear sights were completely removed. Overall, the Japanese had removed and simplified anything they could without making the rifle dangerous to use, although that point is still up for debate. National Defense Rifle Type Bolt Action Rifle Place of Origin Japan with the Americans and even potentially the Soviet Union closing in on the Japanese home islands, the threat of invasion was very real and the pre-existing civil defense leagues were starting to be mobilized in the event of an invasion. These home guard troops and guns could not be made fast enough or in large enough numbers to both outfit the frontline troops and the home guard, so even the hugely simplified Type 99 would not find itself in the hands of the home guard troops. Instead of an extremely simplified bare-bones rifle, the National Defense Rifle was issued out to members of the Home Guard. Little is known about these series of rifles, and they were not any kind of specific rifle. 
basic designs were handed down from the Japanese government to workshops around the country who were ordered to manufacture rifles chambered in either the 7.7x58mm Arasaka rifle cartridge or the 8x22 Nambu pistol cartridge. The finished works that were put out by these workshops were extremely simplistic and crude. Since each workshop had free reign of how they wanted to design their rifle, their design differed from workshop to workshop. But all versions had certain commonalities, such as a stock made from a single piece of wood. Oftentimes, this was just a plank with a slot cut into it in order to hold the barrel and trigger assembly and a single shot capacity. Although these rifles were supposed to be chambered to use standard Japanese ammunition, some did not even use cased ammo, but instead used a muzzle loader that used black powder. An unknown number of these rifles were produced, and none of them saw frontline action, as the invasion of Japan never occurred. Although most of these weapons did see combat in some form, they were produced in fairly limited numbers, and their production ceased with the end of the war. After the war, almost all of these weapons, except the MP3008, which went on to be used by many police forces in the Balkans and other Central and Eastern European countries, were immediately destroyed or sold off after the war. Today, they are extremely rare and oftentimes considered unsafe for use because of their crude and fast production methods.